Quick, name the most visited cultural attraction in our region. Give up? Well, it turns out to be the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium. Over the past couple of decades, the zoo has turned into a real destination, not just for residents of the Pittsburgh region, but for visitors to our region as well. And this summer, it's a great place to visit the islands, a new state-of-the-art exhibit. Dr. Barbara Baker is back with us. She's president and CEO of the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium. Welcome, good to see you again. Oh, it's great to see you as well. Yeah, well, we're doing a show here. It is 4th of July weekend and uh, looking ahead at what else we can do the rest of the summer. And we thought it would be great to find out what's new at the zoo. Oh, there's always something new at the zoo. Yeah. We've got so much going on. And we're really actually right now fulfilling the rest of the zoo architecture and the zoo uh, um, habitats. Hmm. So we really are working on the last five to six acres of the zoo. That's the part so, up the hill, up kind the of hill. at the top of the hill? Yeah, yeah, in the 1990s it used to be where the old uh, reindeer and uh, bison exhibits were and then we've renovated that whole area. You wouldn't even recognize it. Into you haven't a been up there in a while. Okay, beautiful yeah. islands exhibit. Absolutely hmm. gorgeous islands exhibit. You know, it's hard to pull off islands in Pittsburgh. Well, I was thinking about did that, right? We did. <laughs> you fly, we did I don't know how you, yeah, how you do it. So what's up in an islands exhibit? Well, an islands has a Simangs, which are a beautiful lesser ape. They're very large uh, primate that swings through tre trees and very vocal. You can hear them all the way down at Lions, so they're awesome. We have Philippine crocodiles, most endangered crocodiles in the world oh in that God. exhibit. And we have warty pigs, which are these, we don't have any pigs, so warty pigs are perfect. Okay. And they roam around, they're very active, they're very interested in our visitors as well, and they look like, they're kind of strange looking little gray pigs with the mohawks, so they're gorgeous. And then we have clouded leopards to really top off the area, which are absolutely gorgeous small cats. So. Small cat, where do they come from? What Okay, they're clouded? Clouded leopards, clouded yeah, leopards. in South America. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, so they're gorgeous animals. So it really features all, all endangered species in that particular area. And it's been a very, very popular exhibit. And, and the area also, ironically, it's interesting to me, the area also includes a beach area. Mm -hmm. uh, and the beach area is very popular with, with people who have not had an opportunity to go to the beach. So we'll see a lot of parents play in there with small children. And they'll be playing I mean, in the literally sand. where you can hang on literally, the beach. The kids yeah, well, can go yeah. to the beach at the islands up on the top of a hill in Pittsburgh. Exactly. Right? Exactly. You got uh, okay. Adirondack chairs, you got your beach, you know, uh, sunscreen and everything, and you're, you're off and ready to go. And it's all part of a major capital campaign that we're doing. It's a $30 million campaign, and we're very excited to say that we've got $14 million already raised. I was going to ask raised. you, how far along are yeah, you? So you're aiming for 30 you're about halfway there. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, including a $9 million grant, which is the largest single grant we've ever received for, for the zoo project from R.K. Mellon. So R.K. Mellon, that's yay tremendous. for good, good sponsors, great people who really support and love the zoo. Well, we're really fortunate to have the philanthropic resources here in the region and, and it's been great to watch over the last 25 years or so the Pittsburgh Zoo go from being a a, a starving Pittsburgh the city of Pittsburgh right. department to now being its own organization and the kind of investment we've seen has been just terrific. It's amazing you know when we when we privatized the zoo in 1994 our budget was three million dollars now our annual budget what we put back into the economy each, each year is 17 million dollars wow. so it's pretty amazing and in addition to that the zoo so many other things you know we've got a hundred 48 full-time employees and we we are the largest youth employer in our area. Hmm. In the summer months, we'll have 350 to 400 youth working in our area. These are teenagers primarily from Everything, high schools from, and colleges? And we have programs from 14 up. Okay. So we have our zoo team programs from 14 to 17 years of age, and then we have kids that are in college or finishing up high school that work in all our area. Intern programs, shadow programs. Hmm. And then in addition, we have a great uh, you know relationship with a lot of the senior citizens throughout the area who come and work for us as well. We, it would say a great second job for them or just something to do during retirement so it works out very well for us. And in the last few years you took a leap right outside of the city of the uh, city of Pittsburgh with out in Somerset County we where did. you're working on elephants right? We're working on elephants. Along? It's yeah. going very well. We're actually in the process of building a six million dollar cow-calf barn out there a maternal health care center we're calling it hmm. and uh, it'll actually have a roaming area for the elephants to be 26 acres they'll be able to roam across and really enjoy so that project's going very very well. Now that's and not it, an open to the public sort of a thing. Not. Right. We do private tours out there, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not because we really want to focus just on the animals. So the exhibits are built purely for the, the health and well-being of the animals. And so we don't have the human aspect involved there, so we can really focus on their needs. Well, I've been stunned at the decline of the elephant population in <gasps> Africa. It's oh, just it's the amazing. poaching continues. It's just terrifying. Continues and continues. And zoos become the, the Noah's Ark, right, for well, elephants. You, exactly. You do economics. And, you know, I, I'm a veterinarian by trade. But the amazing thing to me is that the economics in China 
China and in Thailand and in Vietnam have so affected the African elephant population because people now have money in, in those countries to buy the trinkets and the things that they've always seen the wealthy class have and now they want them. And so it's driving the poaching of African elephants. We're losing 96 a day, African elephants a day uh, in Africa and simply for the ivory. Nothing yeah. else. And wow. what's really sad is, is we're seeing a, a uh, growth of orphanages, elephant orphanages, because what the protesters will do is they'll come in with a helicopter, they'll literally massacre the entire herd, uh, but they'll leave the babies there just to starve to death. Oh so, my gosh. you know, the rangers will come along, find the babies, and we're helping to support orphanages in Africa now. Well, that is, and it's tr wonderful to see that work happening right here in our region, just over in Somerset County. Only a few seconds left. If somebody hasn't been to the zoo in a while, other than islands, what's the first thing they should go take a look at? Well, we have a fabulous new giraffe and zebra habitat uh, joining our cheetah area okay. and a brand new restaurant, Jumbo Grill, which just has the most beautiful views of giraffes, elephants, and zebras you'll find anywhere. All right. Got to go check it out. Dr. Barbara Baker from the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium. Congratulations. Good to oh, see you. Thanks thank you. So it's great to see you again. Yeah, you too. Have a great summer. Beyond the zoo, there's good reason this summer to invite friends and family to come visit our region. We'll see what's coming up when our region's business returns. Stay with us.